and Joe Biden doesn't understand the basics, and then he lies about it. I mean, this was an abomination, what he did on CNN the other night. And, you know, she should have challenged him a little bit more. She did a little bit. She does have a background in finance, so she should have been able to go right after him a little bit harder. But, hey, it's CNN, and it was the president, and they don't want to do that. I get it. I get it. I don't get it, but I get it. And I, I want you to see this because we've we got to pick this apart a little bit, especially considering the University of Michigan index that he's citing, right, just came out today, not in his favor. And the fact that he would lie about inflation, like flat out lie, is crazy. Let's roll this tape. So when you talk about the economy, of course, it is by far the most important issue for voters. It's also true right now, Mr. President, that voters by a wide margin trust Trump more on the economy. They say that in polls. And part of the reason for that may be the numbers. And, and, and you're aware of many of these, of course. Uh, the cost of buying a home in the United States is double uh, what it was when you look at your monthly costs from before the pandemic. Real income, when you account for inflation, is actually down since you took office. Economic growth last week, far short of expectations. Consumer confidence, maybe no surprise, is near a two-year low. With less than six months to go to Election Day, are you worried that you're running out of time to turn that around? We've already turned it around. Look, look at the, the Michigan survey. For 65% of the American people think they're in good shape economically. They think the nation's not in good shape, but they're personally in good shape. The polling data has been wrong all along. You know, how, how many you guys do a poll at CNN? How many folks you have to call to get one response? The idea that we're in a, a situation where things are so bad. The folks, that, I mean, we've created more jobs. We've made, we're in a situation where people have access to good paying jobs. And the last I saw, the combination of the inflation, the, the cost of inflation, all those things, that's really worrisome to people with good reason. That's why I'm working very hard to bring the cost of rentals down, to increase the number of homes that are available. But let me say it this way. When I started this administration, people were saying there's going to be a collapse in the economy. We have the strongest economy in the world. Let me say it again, in the world. Although GDP last week was far short of expectations. Oh, it wasn't. Look, GDP is still growing. Look at the response of the markets. Overwhelmingly positive. Overwhelmingly positive. And one of the reasons why people feel good about it not being as strong as it was before is they believe that the Fed's going to respond. They hope they're going to get a rate cut. Yeah. Well, so, but, I mean, no president's had the run we've had in terms of creating jobs and bringing down inflation. It was 9% when I came to office. 9%. But it, look, people have a right to be concerned. Ordinary people, the idea that you, you bounce a check and you get a $30 fee for bouncing the check, I changed that. Okay, so he's trying to change the conversation. Yeah. Let's pause it there at least. Drew, we can always go back. I'm just going to jump in. Inflation was not 9% when Joe Biden came to office. Joe Biden drove inflation to 9% when he came into office. In fact, inflation was actually, ladies and gentlemen, 1.4% <laughs> when he came into office. I mean, this was just a flat out lie. ABC News called it out. New York Post called it out in a big headline. I mean, I'm sitting there watching this going, what the heck? Here, here we go. Biden tells a lie. A lie a minute during CNN interview. It was a brief 17-minute interview. Biden told 15 lies. <laughs> That's nearly a lie a minute. They write from Whoppers about the economy to provocations on Israel. Biden spun a fantasy land of a presidency that voters know is false, okay? That's the reality of what is out there. Guess what, Joe Biden? You can't hide behind all of your networks anymore. You can't control the message anymore. In part, because guess what? I'm right here. <laughs> and there's plenty more where that came from. Anybody, anybody who can is out here on their own streaming, doing all of this, because guess what? We don't have to have people looking through our scripts, correcting words, saying you can say this, you can't say that. And you know what? As a result of all that, you guys benefit because you're actually getting the truth. So here's the truth. Inflation was 1.4% when Joe Biden came into office. The Federal Reserve, yes, shares a lot of the blame because they just get printing money. 
And when you print that much money, guess what? You get inflation. So the Fed was a problem. But there were more problems. Joe Biden, he actually issued a third stimulus check. I'm like, are you crazy? What are you doing? I mean, I was after Trump, but this is a second stimulus. I was like, are you crazy, right? Like, that's too much money to be circulating when the Fed is doing the exact same thing. You can't have both fiscal and monetary, for goodness sakes. Well, Joe did it, and then Chuck Schumer and everybody, they started the printed press going on their side, all while you had the Fed doing its thing on its side. And guess what you did? You actually increased the money supply by record amounts. Like, this has never happened in our history. Drew, I don't know if you have that chart that I sent to you about inflation under Biden versus inflation under Trump. If you have it, it would be good for people to see because it's remarkable. You see inflation way down here under, under Trump. And then you see inflation, woo, way up here under Joe Biden. And yes, it's come down a little bit, but it's still way up here. You know why? Because once it goes up, even if it comes down, guys, even if it comes down, you're at a different median level, right? Because it's not like you're, you're going down below where you were before. So when you look at these side by sides, and this is a great chart that, that Drew has up right now. Let me see if you, we can play this for people. You got energy up about 40%. You've got egg costs, you know, up nearly 50%, all of those things, right? That, this is a good one for you to see chicken up 23.9%. And they're talking about the bird flu. Watch out for that. What's that going to do? Does that mean everybody has to stay home from voting again? <laughs> Airfare up 32.7%, apparel up 13.5%. I mean, everything is up, up, up and away. It's not like wages are keeping pace with this. So again, when you look at inflation under Donald Trump, you compare and contrast it with inflation under Joe Biden, you get a very different picture. And this is why I say, look, the proof is in the pudding. At some point, your policy and the people that you have running your government, they actually do matter. You can't hide behind this fantasy land. You can't have your favorite network reporters over on MSNBC carrying your water all the time. At some point, when somebody goes to actually fill up their gas tank with fuel, they realize, you know what, this isn't, this isn't working out so well for me now, is it? So lie, 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 lie. Keep lying, Joe. America sees through it. We know exactly what is up. One of the other things that caught my eye in that interview was when he started to say, hey, you know, the economy is doing great. Look at the markets. Look at the markets, you know. And it's because people think, and, and Aaron jumped in and said they think they're going to get a rate cut. Newsflash, you get a rate cut when the economy is in really bad shape because you're trying to prevent a recession. That's when you get a cut. So that does not help his argument. Again, he's not very smart, but it does not help his argument that the economy is strong. I mean, if Wall Street's looking for a rate cut, that doesn't actually help things very much, Joe. Here we go. Oh, I love this chart. I love myself a good chart. Take a look at Trump versus Biden. Trump's in the red. You see inflation's quite low. And wow, off to the races as soon as Joe Biden comes in. That's because the third stimulus check came along with congressional stimulus that followed along with the Federal Reserve doing its thing. The Federal Reserve didn't stop printing until February of 22. I mean, it's outrageous it went that long. And so then you start to see inflation fall. Look at that into 23. And lately it's been picking up a little bit. We're bouncing around here, but overall we're at a much higher level than we ever were under Donald Trump. And once inflation is ingrained to the economy, it sticks, it stays, and you got it for a long. It's one of the reasons why I say, you know what, you got to diversify your portfolio. We talk about this at 76. I'll mention that in just a second. But first off, I just want to give a shout out to our good friends over at American Heart for Gold because they know this, they get this, and they want to help prepare you for your future in a diversified way. And so you should take a look at this. I do think that owning gold is a sensible thing to do. It's just part of, you know, I'm not your financial advisor and I have to be careful about this, but if you want, if you want more advice, I do encourage 76research.com. But as far as it goes with just sort of diversifying your basic portfolio, I mean, gold is one of those mechanisms, one of those tools that you can use to do this. Silver as well. I mean, I think a lot of people are looking at silver and thinking potentially it could be undervalued here because people tend to flock just to gold. But as gold appreciates, and it's been appreciating, 
New price on it is $2,366 an ounce, up about 1% and change in today's trading. Silver now trading around $28 an ounce. But in other words, these are ways that you can help hopefully to diversify yourself and ensure that your dollars are still worth something one day, right? Because the more money they print, the more it's going to hurt your dollar. And I know the dollar is doing well relative to other things, right? I, I'm planning a trip to Ireland again and I'm like, great, you know, my dollar's doing okay. That's because the ECB keeps on cutting. So yes, the dollar looks strong relative to that. But if they cut again, if we go into a recession, they start cutting, what does that do to your dollar? I mean, it's amazing when you see gold this high considering what the dollar is doing. I actually think that's a very bullish sign. Anyway, if you are interested in investing in gold, I'm thrilled to announce this partnership with American Heart for Gold. Wonderful company, great testimonials about it, super high rating from the Better Business Bureau. Go give them a ring and look at that up to $15,000 worth of free silver, would you? You can text Trish to 65532. Again, text Trish, my name to 65532 for up to $15,000 in free silver. You can call them 1-844-495-1115, or you can click the link in this broadcast. So look at all of those things, you guys, because diversification is really important. Speaking of diversification, by the way, you gotta have the investments to begin with, right? You gotta actually think about planning your future. A report out recently saying that Social Security is gonna be out of money, it, like, in a few years. So I wouldn't count on Uncle Joe and Uncle Sam to help you out. I would be looking very hard at how you can prepare for your future. And one of the best ways to do this is by having a portfolio that's really solid. I, I, I'm going to talk a little bit about our income builder portfolio over at 76 Research. Go to 76research.com, sign up. You should get the 76 report. It just came out today. We get all into the inflation stuff and we explain it really well, I think. It's, it's well worth understanding. You really need to understand inflation, how that relates to gold, for example, the dollar, et cetera. This is my friend Rob Horton. I've known him for years, and he's a very simpatico with our way of thinking. He's had a tremendous career on Wall Street, over two decades, managing billions of dollars, and he's just a super smart stock picker. And I got a lot of good ideas myself as well, do I not, right? So I figured the two of us teaming up, we could help to provide you with some of that expertise. So there are model portfolios portfolios in there that you should take a look at. 10 to 15 stocks in each of the portfolios. I do think in light of what we're talking about today, the income builder portfolio makes a lot of sense. So take a look at that. Subscribe to the 76 Research Report. Sign up for one of the model portfolios. You can read about them on the website and take care of yourself, right? Because we all know this economy being what it is, is not exactly ideal. And, and you know what? If you have money, <laughs> Joe Biden wants it anyway. So you got to think about really protecting yourself for the future.